Hi, welcome to Pikai Pharmacy. So today we are going to learn about Carl Fisher titration and this video will be a very concise video where our focus will be more on the principle of this titration. So Carl Fisher titration is a titration method that uses volumetric or colometric titration to determine the quantity of water present in a given analyte that is our sample. Now as a part of its history, a German chemist named Carl Fischer originally developed this method for quantitative chemical analysis in the year 1935. And this Carl Fischer reagent consists of iodine, sulfur dioxide, a base and a solvent such as alcohol. Now let's come to the principle of this Carl Fischer titration. Now actually the principle of Carl Fischer titration is based on the redox reaction between iodine and sulfur dioxide in the presence of water. So now we know that it is based on an oxidation reaction between iodine and sulfur dioxide. And water here reacts with the iodine and sulfur dioxide to form sulfur trioxide and hydrogen iodide. And the endpoint arrives when all the water from the analyte is consumed during this reaction. So here what happens that the water from the analyte that is the sample reacts with sulfur dioxide and iodine and it produces hydrogen iodide and sulfur trioxide. Now when all the water is consumed in this reaction from the analyte, so at that time there is a sudden drop of current that happens during the end point. So a constant current is detected during the whole titration process but at the end point there is a sudden drop in the current when all the water gets consumed in this reaction. Now this reaction media, the solvent also contains a base that is the pyridine and this pyridine reacts with the sulfur trioxide to produce pyridinium sulfate. This pyridinium sulfate further reacts with methanol to produce pyridinium methyl sulfate complex. Now this pyridine and this pyridinium methyl sulfate complex also has some crucial roles, some important functions that we will discuss in the later part of this video. Now this Carl Fischer titrimetric apparatus consists of an automatic burette, a back titration flask, a stirrer, and equipment for amperometric titration at a constant voltage or potentiometric titration at a constant current. All this for the determination of the end point. So in this Carl Fischer titration, the reaction uses a non-aqueous system that contains excess sulfur dioxide with primary alcohol that is we use methanol as a solvent which serves both as a diluent and as a reaction media. Now this pyridine what I have said earlier this pyridine is also used as a base or we can say a buffering agent. So we can use either pyridine or imidazole in this Carl Fischer reagent because they are basic in nature and thus they help to neutralize the acidic hydrogen iodide. So hydrogen iodide is very acidic in nature. So this pyridine or imidazole help in its neutralization. If it is not neutralized then this acidic hydrogen iodide will cause a reversible reaction to form water again. So it will cause a reverse reaction to form H2O again. So now we can say that Carl Fischer titration is a technique for the determination of moisture content and this method is based on reagent that reacts with water and converts the water into a non-conductive chemical. Now here is a formula you can see through which the content of water can be determined. Now when it comes to the type of Carl Fischer titration, we can broadly divide it into two parts. One is volumetric Carl Fischer titration and another one is colometric Carl Fischer titration. Now we are going to keep it a very short video and won't go very deep into these individual titration processes. But we can understand the difference between these two like this volumetric Carl Fischer titration is suitable for samples with higher water content like the water when uh, is measured in milligram then this method is suitable for it. Now this volumetric Carl Fischer titration is not suitable for analyzing trace amount of water okay it at least at least 10 milligram of water must be present in the sample for this volumetric technique to produce results with an acceptable level of precision. Also uh, another thing to be noticed that in this volumetric titration a solution containing iodine is added directly from the burette during this titration process. Whereas in colometric Carl Fischer titration, it has many benefits 
when water content is as low as 10 microgram so it is very suitable for determining trace amount of water which was incapable with volumetric titration method so this colometric Kalfisha titration has the same chemistry but the main difference is the way of introducing iodine into the titration cell now in this colometric Kalfisha titration the iodine which is required for the reaction is generated from a precursor by applying electrical pulse to the electrode the Kalfisha reagent contains an iodine precursor which is oxidized to iodine in contact with the working anode which is present inside the titration cell so these are the basic differences between volumetric Kalfisha titration and colometric Kalfisha titration now there are endless applications of this Kalfisha titration like it helps to increase the product stability in pharma products or food products it is applicable to stop the growth of microorganism by determining water content it is helpful in analytical techniques for quantitative analysis of water content it is used in the food industry for water content determination in food juice honey flour noodles chips and coca powder like this there are many applications with this technique this was a small concise video on Carl Fisher titration focusing only on the principle of this method so i hope you like this video thanks for watching stay healthy bye